Wondering about Texas A&M chemical engineering degree? Let's check it out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we'll talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So don't forget to click on the notification bell so you get all my latest videos. Some time ago, I uploaded a video which was essentially the curriculum of a chemical engineer in Tech de Monterrey, which is my university. And I saw a lot of comments that were asking on several universities. And I asked myself, why not make a review of a chemical engineering degree in the USA? And to be honest with you guys, I am quite familiar with the Texas system. As you can see, a lot of people from Monterey go to study in Texas, especially because, of course, they have a great oil and gas industry, but they also have great universities. And of course, they also have great standard of living. So that's why a lot of my, let's say, colleagues or friends end up studying there. And it's pretty common that I end up talking with them, and especially in parties or gatherings or so. And they used to tell me how it works, the structure, the difference between college, university, all these type of things. So that's why I'm kind of familiar with the structure. And what I want to do in this specific video is to check out all the mandatory subjects for chemical engineering. And of course, all those courses that are not quite mandatory. The university I selected is Texas A&M just because it's one of the most famous ones. I know that UT is also a very common one, but Texas A&M is the one that I could get the easiest curriculum or syllabus from. Texas A&M is located in College Station. They have a beautiful campus and College Station is between Houston and Austin. It's kind of like a triangle. So if you're from Austin, it's great because it's kind of near. If you're from Houston, it's also kind of near. And it's great because if you want to focus on into tech startups or tech companies, you can go to Austin. And if you want to follow the traditional chemical engineering path of oil and gas, or maybe manufacturing industry, you go to Houston. Currently, they have 72,000 students. Most of them are bachelor students, which is about 50,000. They also have about 10,000 students in master's degree, and they have 5,000 PhD students as well. It really amazes me the ratio between master's degree and PhD, which is great, two to one. It's always great to have that number. So congrats on Texas A&M. Moving on, the university offers a lot of variety of degrees. So you can select from electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and of course, the one that we are going to be checking out, chemical engineering degree. It is a bachelor that lasts between four, four and a half years, depending on your pace or rhythm. And it is regarded as one of the top universities for chemical engineering. So that's a little bit on the university, so you get a better idea or understanding. If you're in the US, or maybe if you're into chemical engineering, I'm pretty sure that you have heard about this university. Without further ado, let's check out the curriculum. Okay, before you ask me guys, you can access the syllabus going to the Texas A&M University.edu site, then go to undergraduates, then go to engineering, chemical, BS stands not for what you're thinking, but most likely for bachelor degree or bachelor in science. And these are two things. You can check out the program requirements or the overview. The overview, I think, is for people that may be interested in chemical engineering, don't have quite a idea of what program I'm going to cover. But if you already know or decided for chemical engineering, let's check out directly. Now I'm going to first structure the video. First year, second year, third year, fourth year. Okay. And I'm going to be focusing mostly on mandatory courses because I know that in the US you can always go for other courses or subjects and still be able to get some credit. But of course, you have a minimum requirement. General chemistry for engineering students. That's really straightforward. It's chemistry for engineering students, most likely biotech, more likely also for mechanical engineering or and all that. Then we have the lab for such course. So I really think it's always great to have a lab for chemistry. So you get acquaintance with the chemistry, with the actual use of glassware, with the rules of safety and all that. So this is once again, those that are kind of mandatory, the introduction to rhetoric and composition or composition and rhetoric, which is exactly the same. Essentially how to write, how to uh, be able to write an 
essay or to communicate something with your boss or something formal, this is very important, especially if you are not from the US. And also if you are from the US guys, let's admit it, most of you may need some help with some writing. Then we have a little bit on the engineering lab, essentially computing, coding and all that. I'm always looking forward to see this type of courses, especially in the beginning. Because in the beginning you are like open-minded, you are open to learn and what better thing to learn than coding. For every engineer, coding is like a holy grail. You need to know how to code, but more importantly, feel confident that you can learn how to code. Then a little bit on engineering mathematics. This is most likely going to be derivatives, uh, calculus, basic problem solving, analytical, math, and so on. Then we have the university core curriculum. As you can imagine, all the students that go there most likely are going to study here. I'm just going to open it, it for the sake of checking out the type of courses that you will see communication, life and physical sciences, arts, language, history, social, government, political, you know, all these things that we consider filler stuff, but some cases, some courses may be worthwhile. Going back, we will continue with the second part of the first year. We have a little bit on experimental physics and engineering lab mechanics. Then we have engineering mathematics number two, which is going to be most likely calculus, yes, but more towards the integral parts or integration methods and all these uh, numerical methods in order to solve the integrals. To be honest, this is a little bit harder than the first one, not just because it's the second one, but because it's like multiplying and dividing. It's way easier to multiply than divide. Newtonian mechanics for engineering and science, which is essentially statics, and dynamics and knowing how to uh, make equations, how to solve for them, how to make free body falling, maybe even some fluid mechanics, uh, very basic ones, either static pressure or so. And finally, you have the option to select one of the following, which is kind of fun because, well, apparently it gotta be chemistry. So quick summary, I really like that you have all the sciences, chemistry, math, physics. I would really love to see a little bit more into the chemical engineering side, from the first year because to be honest you are already studying chemical engineering and you want to get acquainted with that maybe material balance or maybe an introduction to engineering something like that would be great to have but overall i think it's strong curriculum second year okay so the first term is going to be organic chemistry which is always a classic one most chemical engineers either hate it or love it uh, most likely hate it i really didn't like it that much because it's kind of different or the approach is there's always a exclusion there's always an exception and that's something that i think engineers don't like that and also you're going to have your lab which is once again great you can always complement experimental with theoretical concepts and if you are weak in the theoretical part maybe on the experimental part you're great or vice versa elementary chemical engineering so i'm pretty sure that this may be the beginnings of material balances maybe or maybe theoretical concepts of flow diagrams, process flow diagrams, unit operations and all that. So great. Actually, you can check out more information here. I'm going to do it. Solution of elementary problems by application of math balances and energy balances. So forget it. It's straightforward math balance. Then we have experimental physics and engineering lab, which is essentially mostly into electricity. So physics ones is all the Newton stuff, uh, first law, second law, all that. Then we have the physics number two, which is mostly into, into more advanced physical processes, but still talking about statics, dynamics, and all that. And then we have the third physics, which is typically electricity and magnetism, which is also a very interesting concept. Of course, we have engineering mathematics. I just want to verify. This will be more of the abstract math and as well, maybe differential equations that you will be getting started vector algebra, partial derivatives, directional derivatives, gradient, multiple integration, integrals. Okay, so all this may seem kind of overwhelming for the math side, but to be honest, all this mathematics that you're going to be using in engineering is going to be likely very small. This is just for the sake for those problems that get very complicated. And to be honest, you really need to have the confidence of the mathematics that at least you know how to approach the problem. We continue with electricity and magnetism for engineering and science. Not quite sure what's the difference between these two, but they seem pretty similar. And we continue with the second term, organic chemistry too. 
So this is something I see a lot in the US that you have organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two. So let me check out what's the main difference because of course you can have organic chemistry three, four, five, and six. But my question is, does a chemical engineer really needs two organic chemistry? Okay, so essentially just say that it's the continuation. Okay, unfortunately we don't have that much info. Chemical engineering and thermodynamics, which is great, is the second approach after elementary chemical engineering, which is right here, is the second approach towards engineering, which I think is very important. The more engineering subjects you get from the beginning is best. Why? Because if you're into engineering, you will love it. And if you're not into engineering, you will just know that maybe engineering is not for you and you will not waste that much time. Technical and professional writing, well, once again, these are the type of subjects that sound great. So being able to technically write or being able to write something professionally, something formal, but in practice, it's not likely going to happen. It's very rare whenever I hear someone say that this is a great course or a great subject to take. Finally, differential equations. So this will be like the equivalent of math four or the fourth math or math four. Really, this is way much useful than mathematics three. So pay extra attention, especially in the way we solve differential equations. Let's continue with the third year. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be getting a little bit a while now. And yes, as you can see, Chen, Chen, Chen. This is chemical engineering and chem is mostly for chemistry. So just to get an idea of what's next. So the first term of the third year, which is fall, we have chemical engineering fluid operations, which is essentially all the things that are relevant to fluid operation, either liquids or gases. So mostly understanding compression, mostly understanding pumping, uh, mostly understanding friction, loss of friction, what is head of the system, and all these things that are very, very interesting. Then we continue with numerical analysis for chemical engineers. Now, this is an interesting one in the sense that if you really understand it, and if you really remember this in the future, it's going to make your life way easier. It's essentially using mathematics to solve engineering problems. The main thing I see right here, guys, is that a lot of students forget this, and when they are working, they go back to Excel and start doing all the iterations by themselves instead of just using goal seek, a numerical analysis or a numerical method, which is kind of fun. Then we have chemical engineering materials, which sounds kind of interesting. So it's a overview of material science with particular emphasis of materials relevant to chemical engineering. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be using a little bit of nanotechnology, maybe pharma, maybe a little bit of petrochemicals or what are the future materials or all these like concepts of what are the new materials and how the new technologies are being applied. Then we continue with chemical engineering thermodynamics number two. Thermodynamics number one is for me one of the most important subjects you need to get ASIP. The second one is mostly into a thermal equilibrium, chemical equilibrium, which is kind of confusing. Actually, you could say that this is more physical chemistry. Let's check it out here. Application of thermodynamics to pure and mixed fluids, phase equilibrium and chemical reaction equilibrium. So I know it sounds pretty straightforward, but believe me, it's one of the hardest subjects you will see or encounter. Now let's go to the second term of the third year, which is spring. We have a little bit on physical chemistry for engineers, which is kind of funny because I thought this is chemical engineering thermodynamics number two. So checking out here, you see a little bit on quantum theory, spectroscopy, statistical mechanics, kinetic theory, which is, in my opinion, great to study because you will be using it for reactor engineering, uh, reaction kinetics, of course, electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is something that's going to be getting more important in the chemical engineering degree, so it's great to have it already here. And macromolecules, which is, once again, very important for existing applications. Then we have chemical engineering heat transfer operations. So we already see momentum operations. Now heat transfer is essentially working with heaters, working with condensers, working with boilers, reboilers, working with all these things that are used, freezers, all, all these type of materials, understanding how we operate them, how we design them, understanding what type of equipment we have available in the market and so on. Then we have chemical engineering mass transfer operations which in my opinion is one of the hardest ones, you will see that heat transfer and momentum transfer are kind of straightforward. But whenever we talk about mass transfer, it's a little bit more chaotic. You will see later on why. But it's essentially working with distillation column, flash distillations, working with lexiviation maybe, working with binary distillation, 
multi-component distillation, gas absorption, maybe working with stripping. What else do we have here? Liquid liquid extraction, crystallizations. There's a lot of mass transfer operations that you can uh, study and get acquaintance in these type of operations. And finally, which I really think is very heavy for this specific case because you have already heat transfer, you have also mass transfer operations, and you also have reactor engineering. So if you are getting three of the operations, reactors, uh, momentum, heat, and mass transfer. So you get three of them. I really think it's kind of heavy. So good luck with your third year spring semester. And of course you can select one, mid curriculum professional development, whatever that means, high impact experience. Okay, not quite sure what that is. Maybe uh, working in co-op or internship may sound kind of familiar. Actually, let's check it out. What is note number seven? Okay. All students are required to complete a high impact experience in order to graduate. Like if not studying chemical engineering is already not high impact, but let's see what they have here. The list of possible high impact experiences is available in the Chen Advising Office. Okay, if someone is from Texas A&M, please let us know what exactly is this high impact experience project. And finally, the fourth year, let's go and check the fall because I think, yeah, fall, we have fall and spring, a total of eight terms. So the very first one will be process integration, simulation, and economics. So far, you studied already mass and energy balances, thermodynamics, physical chemistry, equilibriums, and all the operations, momentum, heat, mass transfer, and reactor design. So it makes kind of sense to start getting to work with processes. Now that you understand how piping system work, pumping, how to decrease, increase temperatures, maybe change phases, maybe interact with the separation of processes. Now let's get to the actual process. What is the best arrangement to get or maximize our profits or get to that concentration with the technical feasibilities and of course getting within our resources, our margins, our economic analysis and all that. Then we continue with chemical engineering laboratory. I'm pretty sure that this is unit operation lab, essentially working with, I don't know, a small pump, a small compressor, a piping system, seeing how friction affects piping, maybe a filter, maybe you will be working also with heaters, changers, uh, condensing, um, I don't know, there's a lot of unit operation that you could be working here. Process dynamics and control is one of the most important subjects because you really need to understand the process and whenever you're going to be starting up a process or shutting down a process or the mere operation of a process has variations. If there's a change in composition, if there's a change in mixture, if there's a change in temperature, there's always going to be an effect in the process. And what you want to do is to control that change or effect. And the way you do it is via process dynamics and control. Then you have a seminar, oral and written reports on selected topics from recent technical publications. That sounds great because you're going to be getting acquainted with real stuff of the industry, not that much theoretical fuzziness or confusion. You're going to get an article or a process that makes sense or meaning that it's an actually a piece from the industry and not a piece from academia. So all in with that. Then you have bioprocess engineering, which I really think is kind of interesting that this is mandatory and not an optional because there's a lot of people that may not be into bioprocesses or biotech. I really think that a chemical engineer in the near future, maybe in 10, 20 years, must know the basics of bioprocesses or biotech because I know there's, there's biotech engineers, but the chemical engineer cannot ignore that part. You're gonna say, no, I'm not into biotech, I'm not into enzymes, I'm not, no. You need to go all in. This is especially becoming more relevant because all the chemical engineers are getting into greener processes, more sustainable processes, and a lot of that things are working with bio. Then you have can specialty options, which not quite sure what's that, for a list of approved specialty options, or oh, essentially it's a topic you select any random topic you can i'm going to assume that you have finance maybe arts maybe i don't know and finally guys the last term which will be the fourth year spring term you have three main topics chemical engineering plant design which we already talked about is essentially getting all the courses all the core chemical engineering into a single subject creating and designing chemical processes 
for the production of interesting chemical products. Then you have Chemical Engineering Lab, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be more unit operations. Let's see what they have here. Essentially, laboratory work based on these courses. I'm pretty sure it's going to be momentum. Yeah, mass transfer, reactor engineering, lab one and process time. Oh, okay. So now we are going to include the process dynamics and control lab. Then we have process safety engineering, which is one of the most important things that you will encounter in the industry, especially in the US. Having a knowledge of process safety is like getting a step beyond other engineers. So congratulations on that, Texas A&M. It's going just great. Finally, university core curriculum, essentially the, all the other subjects and more Chan specialty options. You will finish the total semester credit hours 96. Okay guys, so that was the curriculum of Texas A&M. I cannot talk that much on it because I didn't study there. I didn't experience those courses, but I have taught some courses and I can tell you guys that the logical order makes sense. Uh, also, it looks pretty robust in the core. So you're learning about thermodynamics, you're learning chemistry, physics, you're learning a lot of maths. So yeah, I would say that this is a great curriculum. So if you're wondering if Texas A&M curriculum is great, I will say that for sure, it's a great curriculum. My only question or debate will be what other type of courses does the university has in order to make the chemical engineer not the traditional chemical engineer, but convert them into a better version of the chemical engineers that are already on the market. So I would say maybe adding some hydrogen technologies, some carbon capture technologies, maybe a little bit more on the internet of things, on the industrial revolution 4.0, all these things that are getting relevant is something that I don't see quite often in the curriculums. I just see robust cores on chemical engineering training, but I don't see that much this like updating of the chemical engineer, which will be great to see. Nonetheless, it's a great degree guys. And this is what I wanted to share with you guys. What do you think, especially if you are from Texas A&M, what courses do you think are like the best courses? Which courses you think are not quite worth it? And what would you love to have? And well, I'm pretty sure that this video may reach some high school students, so they may be wondering this. It will be great to have it already posted in the comment section. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.